All right, let's take a look at a, a quick one using uh, implicit differentiation here. And there are a couple of ways that you can do this, and, and I'm going to attempt to do both of them so that you can see uh, that it really has uh, uh, makes no difference as to how you tackle it. Uh, some problems, however, do make a difference as far as their ease. Some are easier than others to, to solve through implicit differentiation rather than trying to go through the brute force method of, say, uh, multiple quotient and product rules, that sort of thing. Okay, so in this first one, we're asked to find dy dt when dx or when x equals what, eight, dx is e or dx dt is ten. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to take the derivative of this thing with respect to t. So the derivative with respect to t of x y is four, and I put all of that in there because we have to take the derivative of both sides. Okay, so as we're doing this, then. Here's way number one. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to do this through implicit differentiation. Okay, And remember, implicit differentiation uses uh, the idea of the chain rule. So that what we do is we say, suppose x and y now are not functions of one another, but are functions of t. That's what we're looking at, is functions of t. So according to our product rule, I take the derivative of the first thing, which is just one derivative of x is one times the derivative of what's inside. So that's dx dt times the second thing plus the derivative of the second thing, which is y, which is one, and the times the derivative of what's inside, which is dy dt times the first thing. And the derivative of any constant is zero. Okay, so here's method one. In that case, then, here is the general form of the solution. It's going to be y dx dt plus x dy dt. And that equals 0. Okay. Method 2 involves solving for y. And so we're going to take x y equals 4, but then that e implies that y is equal to 4 over x. All right. So. Let's go ahead and take this derivative here, grab a different color. And so we're going to take the derivative of both sides with respect to t. Okay, so the derivative with respect to t. The derivative of, derivative of y is 1 dy dt equals. Now the derivative of this is 4 times x to the negative 1. Okay, the derivative of 4 times x to the negative 1. In order to do that, the 4 comes out, the derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared times the derivative of what's inside, which is dx dt. Okay. Now, if we look at it, you're going to say, well, these two aren't the same. That's, that's just can't be. I have a negative 4 over x squared dx dt. And over on the other side, I don't have that at all. Okay. It, yeah, you're right. It doesn't look that way anyway. But now, if we come back to the original problem, we say, well, xy is equal to 4. That means that y is equal to 4 over x. Well, then that simply means that you have uh, 4 over x dx dt plus x dy dt equals zero. Now you can move this and you can say, well, that means that x dy dt is equal to negative four over x dx dt by subtracting negative four over x dx dt from both sides. And then we divide by x. Okay, so we're dividing both sides by x. That cancels here. It does not not cancel here. In fact, it, it bumps that up a notch. So we end up having our negative 4 over x squared dx dt. Now, again, they look fundamentally different. They are the same thing. That's the danger in calculus, is that you can have the same answer. So if you're checking your answers in a book or something like that, you can have the same answer, just might look different. So it, it really amounts to the numbers. All right, either way, 
we have now in our possession dx dt and dy dt and y's and x's. Okay, so now the question is find dy dt when x is equal to 8. Okay, well now here in this case they're only giving us the x values. It might actually be better to use the result that only has x values. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and erase this now. So that way I can put the put what I'm using up here. And the one that uses the x values only is this one here. So we have dy dt is equal to negative 4 over x squared dx dt. Simply plug in x equals 8. Okay, so now I have negative 4 over 64, which is negative 6, no, 1 over 16. And dx dt is 10. So it's 10, negative 10 over 16, which is negative 5 eighths. Again, we do the same thing down in here with b. Find dx dt when x is 1. Okay, so we throw a 1 in for x. Negative 4 over 1 squared is just negative 4. dy dt is negative 6. So we're going to have the, we're going to have negative 6, and then we're going to have to divide by negative 4 on both sides. Okay, and when we do that, we get 3 halves. And that's how you do those problems. Either way you do them is fine by me. I prefer the first way, and then I can go always go back to substitute. Um, but that's that's experience. I, I found that implicit differentiation just works better on certain style of problems. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this next one here, where we've got dx dt is two centimeters per second. Find dy dt for the given values of x. Okay, so I'm going to take the derivative of both sides here. dy dt is equal to 2x dx dt, your chain rule, and now plus 1 goes away in the derivative. All right, so dx dt is constant at 2 centimeters. So this is going to be now, I can simply go in there and replace it with dx dt is equal to 2. So dy dt, the rate that y is changing according to time, is equal to 4x. Okay, so now all I have to do is plug in values of x. It's a beautiful thing. So dy dt here is equal to 4 times negative 1, which is negative 4. dy dy dt here is equal to 4 times 0, which is 0. And dy dt here is equal to 4 times 1, which is 4. So not bad. Don't forget, the chain rule is the biggest thing that comes into play when dealing with implicit differentiation.